Remember uh, the Uber, Uber, the Uber vehicle struck and killed a woman in Tempe, Arizona recently. Police say there's a video. Uh, so the Uber car, autonomous car, struck and killed a woman on Sunday. Uh, does show the video shows that she moved in front of it very suddenly. But in wake of this, Boston also an Uber test market for driverless cars. They have suspended the use of those cars. Happened about 10 p.m. The woman was walking a bike. Moved into traffic from a dark area. It's very clear that it would have been difficult to avoid the collision in any kind of mode. That's the uh, Tempe Police Department, the chief, saying. But it brings up a lot of questions regarding liability. Liability. Let's go to Luke Cairo, who we talk to from time to time from GWC Law. As we move towards autonomous vehicles, Lou, uh, this is going to have to get sorted out in the courts sooner rather than later, don't you think? Well, yeah, it, it definitely will, and it brings up a lot of big issues. I mean, we all depend on other drivers to be responsible, following the rules of the road, be you know, not be texting and driving and doing things that are distracting. And now suddenly we have driverless cars that are completely driverless, and we have these autonomous cars where there's a safety driver literally sitting in the driver's seat. He's looking at and he's following his uh, his Facebook feed or he's, he's picking his toenails, whatever he's doing, <laughs> as long as he's sitting in the driver's seat. And where's the responsibility, like the legal responsibility, when one of these vehicles does cause a serious accident and it's not the the uh, pedestrian's fault or another driver's fault and it's this is gonna be a, there's going to be a lot of litigation about this and there's going to be tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars having to be invested in lawsuits because you're now taking on computer software companies rather than taking on joe schmo who's driving who you know is looking at uh, a billboard as he drove by and didn't see the light turn mm -hmm. red so i mean what is we're gonna have to indemnify indemnify robots well, we're not going to indemnify them. The, the, the software companies may end up, you know, Google and, and Uber and these companies that are developing this software, which, you know, is going to turn us into the Jetsons. And we all remember that from when we were kids. Um, you know, they're going to end up indemnifying or having to uh, fund the, the cost of the liability in the event that these uh, these vehicles malfunction in some way. I mean, there's, there, was, there was a case in... Uh, two years ago in China, where an uh, Uber driver, uh, I'm sorry, not an Uber driver, a guy's driving a Tesla, and the thing just drives right into the back of a road sweeping truck, and the guy was killed. And there was a case in Florida a year and a half ago where a guy's driving a Tesla, and the, the oh yeah, the truck sitting in the sitting in the truck in the pass in the driver's seat, but not driving. He's, he can be taking a nap. And crashed right into the back of a semi, or a semi made a left turn, mm -hmm. hit him. You know, and, you, and as a as a human being, we have the instinct to turn to the left, turn to the right, slam on the brakes, do something. These computers are supposedly faster, smarter, more efficient, but they're not human beings. In that Florida the case, the apparently the Tesla could not uh, differentiate between a gray sky and a gray truck. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of scary. Because if, that's a problem. Yeah, if you if you were driving and that was your defense, I don't think that defense would go very far in a courtroom. Do you? No. Well, no. Blue, I, I guess also they're saying that uh, at least in this case is they don't think the technology detected uh, the the person in the median. So in other words, you know the peripheral or, or however you know what we would call peripheral vision that this. Uh, autonomous system did not catch that, did not text, uh, did not uh, classify this person as a pedestrian or think that there might be a, tra a problem with this person stepping into traffic. Right, and that's one of the one of the, the the shortcomings of the autonomous cars. You know, in this particular situation, there was a driver sitting in the driver's seat who's supposed to be there, ready, willing, and able to immediately take control of the vehicle while it's kind of on cruise control, but. You know, when you're sitting in the car seat, if you're going to sit there and you got your hands close to the steering wheel, your foot's next to the brake, and you're ready to take action immediately, what the hell do you need an autonomous car for? People you don't pay attention car. when they're driving the car. They're not going to pay attention when they're sitting in the driver's seat and the robot's driving well, the car. Of course they're not it's going folly. to. That's why it may as well be. You may as well sit in the back seat and yeah. pretend you're being chauffeured. Yeah. If there were a backseat driver, perhaps we're not talking about it's this. It's going yeah. to be Uber. If I was Uber, I'd say, sign this. Uh, we're going to give you an autonomous car. There's a price break, what have you, blah, blah, blah. But you're, uh, you have to sign the waiver before you get into the car. Yeah, but what about well, you sign the waiver because you're driving the car? What about the poor p yeah. person who you killed that's crossing the street minding their own business that you didn't see because she had a gray dress on and looks like the gray sky in the background? You know what you know what this means? It means you need GWC because the biggest and the best will always find a way yeah. to get these poor people their money. Well, Lou, who do you who do you? I mean, okay, so this is your case. Uh, who are you going after here? You going after the driver? You going after Uber? You going after the autonomous automaker? Are you going after them all? 
Well, here's the thing. Um, first of all, you have to look at the facts. If this girl, if this was what we would classify as a dart out, like, you know, a dart out, like kids comes between two parked cars and darts in the middle of the street. And any driver, if it was Mario Andretti, one of the greatest drivers in history, he couldn't have done anything. There's just no case. I mean, whether it's an autonomous car or driven by a very competent driver or a terrible driver. I mean, if there's no liability, there's no liability. But we, what we need to evaluate is, okay, first of all, what happened? This person, this vehicle was going north. The person came from the west. So this is a two-lane street. They crossed a lane of traffic. Yes, before they, they got into the... into the lane mm-hmm. that the car was in. Well, wait a minute. If you just cross an 11-foot-wide lane of traffic, you mean to tell me that the driver didn't see the person cross? driver was looking at the phone. I guarantee you. driver's yeah, looking exactly. down, goofing with his phone. Because the driver's in an autonomous car mm-hmm. and feels like he can just basically do his business, read the Wall Street Journal, and not give a crap about the world at large because yeah. he's in an expensive autonomous car. Sure. So, you know, we have to look at that. Now, if, if there's potential liability, if someone's driving the car and the computer doesn't pick it up, then we're going after the, first of all, in this situation, you cannot, the law in this country is you cannot delegate your responsibility for safety and operation of a car to a computer and walk away from uh, any liability. That's why they have the, the driver sitting there 12 bucks an hour. Lou, we'll have to leave it there for now, but uh, people that want to talk to you, of course, go to GWC Law. And uh, we appreciate your time and your expertise as always. My pleasure. Take care. That's uh, Lou Cairo joining us here on...